guys, this is AC Super Tech, and today what we're going over is a compressor that has bad valves. So we're going to be able to read that with the pressures here and with the temperatures on the liquid and the vapor line. Uh, we also have a 68 degree return on the inside of the building and a 59 degree supply. So right there we have a 9 degree delta T across the evaporator coil. This right here is a 5 ton condenser. This is a three phase job and right here we have 146 PSIG and you follow that in and you see that the evaporator quill uh, temperature in the middle of the evaporator quill right on the pink inner ring is 51 degrees. All right, 51 degrees. Well, I'm just going to give you the, sat the superheat and also the subcooling. Just so you know, this system does have a thermostatic expansion valve attached to the uh, inlet of the evaporator quill. But first I'm going to give you the superheat and then I'm going to give you the subcooling and tell you tell you why these readings mean a bad compressor, you know, bad compressor valves. So right here we have our uh, dual readout temp sensor and we're going to switch it over to T2. If you follow T2 I have it right over on the vapor line and we're reading a temperature of 62 degrees. So 62 minus 51 we have 11 degrees of superheat. But here's, here's our issue right here, is we have a very high evaporator coil temperature. So we have a high vapor pressure, and then therefore a high uh, saturated temperature in the evaporator coil. Now we're going to go ahead and look at the liquid line. So you usually charge in subcooling for a system that has a thermostatic expansion valve. Uh, but we use superheat as well to determine any problems. So right here you see that we have... 181 PSIG and it's actually reading about 64 degrees saturated temperature. So saturated temperature has to do with the middle of the condenser coil. So the middle of the condenser coil is about 64 degrees minus, uh, we're going to switch this over to our T1 reading. So we bring T1 right over to here onto our liquid line and we have 59 degrees. So you see we have about four to five degrees of subcooling right now. All right, we're reading four degrees of subcooling presently. So four degrees of subcooling on a system that would typically have at least eight to twelve degrees of subcooling. Right here it says an approximate nominal subcooling value should be ten to eleven degrees Fahrenheit. This is the inside uh, cover of the outdoor condenser. So it's calling for ten to twelve degrees of subcooling. Now you see this temperature has changed up to sixty-two degrees. And we still have about 64 degrees. So that means we have two degrees of subcooling. A low subcooling typically means that you are low on refrigerant. The problem is, if we were low on refrigerant, then this this pressure would be down lower. We do have the proper airflow on the inside. It is not excessive, and there is not a, a, a major heat load on the inside of the building. So you see that the subcooling is telling us that we're low on refrigerant, and the superheat is telling us. Uh, that there is something else wrong. It's not low in refrigerant because if it was low in refrigerant, it would be uh, a lower saturated temperature. So while you see that the subcooling is telling us that we need more refrigerant, the vapor side is saying that the pressure is already too high. So, so right there you have a problem. As well, I do hear some excessive noise coming from the compressor itself. And just so you know, the thermostatic expansion bulb is mounted properly. Uh, that is actually mounted on uh, the vapor line nice and tight with uh, copper straps. So we definitely don't need refrigerant. The thing is, now you need to just determine, okay, is this problem due to the refrigerant itself? Is it the thermostatic expansion bulb that's the problem? Or is it the compressor that's the problem? So you gotta think about those issues right there and determine what the actual problem is. What we can do is we can see how strong this compressor actually is by trying to pump down the unit. So we're gonna go ahead and close this liquid line valve right here and we're going to see what happens to the outdoor unit. In order to determine if it is a thermostatic expansion bulb, what you could do is you could take that bulb and put it in hot water uh, in order to see if you're going to have more cooling effect. But the reality is your pressure is already too high on the vapor line. And you know it's not a, a liquid line restriction because then the vapor pressure will be much lower. So now I'm going to go ahead and shut that liquid line service valve and we're going to try to pump the unit down and see if it has a, a real hard time doing that. And if that's the case, that's just a confirmation that it definitely is the compressor. But once again, that compressor in this case is uh, making excessive noise. Uh, 
I'm going to remove this temp sensor just so it's not in the way. So right now I have the liquid line completely shut. Completely shut. And we don't even see any difference in the pressures at all. So normally what would happen is this vapor pressure would start sucking down with the liquid line completely shut and there's nowhere for the refrigerant to go. The vapor pressure is actually increasing. And that's because you have more refrigerant coming in and getting sucked in from the vapor line right here and for there's nowhere for the refrigerant to go and so it's just recycling uh back from the high side back into the low side again and increasing the pressure on the low side so there's your confirmation that it's definitely a bad compressor right there if you want to help support this hvacr training channel check out patreon.com slash ac surface tech where we're rewarding the members there by adding extra content such as articles videos and answering questions and if you're looking for the tools used in this video such as the ratcheting service wrench or the field piece ST4 uh, dual temperature reader or the uh, manifold gauge set. I have them all linked down in the description below. Now you can actually hear some extra noise coming from inside the compressor and you also see that the vapor pressure is increasing. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.